How are we all doing, everyone? How are we doing? How are we doing? If you can hear me, let me know. I'm looking good, sounding good. Always paranoid that uh, the mic is just randomly not working somehow. Uh, let me uh, do a little check for myself as well. Do, do, do. We'll get right into it. A lot of topics, a lot of stuff to cover. How's everyone doing? Just wait a couple minutes here. There we go. Always do this. Yep. We good. Some latency on there. Okay. Um, might give it another second, just see if anybody comes in in the beginning here, but. Where do I begin? Well, I have a laundry list of thoughts in front of me here. And, um, and I'm going to start real quick with some things that I want to, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the very loyal, you guys, the very loyal members of my audience here that we've, you know, started to gather here on YouTube. I want to, I want to make it clear that I, I am very much still in the actual business of WordPress. Um, it's a huge passion of mine, but like, as I've gotten into the community of WordPress, I've found that there is literally no way that I could be a part of this community and not speak on it at the same time, um, because it's too thought provoking. Um, it's eye opening. There's just there's so much going on. It's like, if you're not in it, I would again, highly recommend that you get in it. Um, and I, I got to drop the links because uh, I, don't, I feel like I've quickly gone. I, I feel like I've quickly become the uh, the number I, I don't know for a fact, but the qu quickly become like the number one um, uh, promoter of this WordPress Slack group. Um, I didn't even know about it two months ago. And now I've posted that link like 50 times. So uh, and I'm direct, I'm absolutely directly responsible for people getting in there. Um, I don't need to take credit for that. I'm just saying like, that's, it's, that's absolutely happened. So, um, yeah, where, where I'm at with this is, uh, I, I want to, again, I want to get it out of the way here and begin. like, this isn't going to be like the, I don't think it's going to be the, the, the continuation of this channel, like always this stuff, but like, if this stuff comes up, I have to talk about it. I mean, you see, you see the, you see the thumbnail, you see it. What's up, Daniel? How you doing? Um, you see the thumbnail, you see what's going on. Uh, you know, th it's literally my feelings. It's like worse than us politics. Um, there's so many parallels and it's just, it's just crazy. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. Um, I mean, obviously worse kind of means bad, but I'm not, I, I want to kind of set the scene up front here because if you're watching this on the replay or you watch this in, in its entirety or whatever, like there's, there's just a lot of things and I'm my like one of my favorite things is to kind of like take a really complex situation and kind of distill it down, ask critical thoughts, things like that, critical questions, and then present it to anybody that gives a shit to not like go in there and, and deal with it. I just really like it. So I have a ton of thoughts. So let's see here. To start off, I have literally no idea how I got here. Um, but again, somebody, I feel like somebody needs to be this person in a way. Maybe not needs, maybe maybe you don't need somebody like this to like kind of just be in there and kind of like go and look at all the stuff and have an opinion on like kind of what's like the meta of the whole thing. Um, because I've read a lot of shit, more than I care to read, by the way. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so this is really like self-reflective, but also like like I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, add value to your guys if you if you give you know, shit at all about WordPress and stuff like that. Cause it is really kind of interesting, uh, how it all, how it all, how the community and how the whole thing works. And by no means do I know everything, uh, about this. I am just in there in the trenches, kind of like reporting in a way. So that's what it is. But I, it seems like somebody needs to be this guy and I've seen other people do it to an extent, but, um, I'm new. So I, uh, I guess I'm just the, the most ambitious and the least educated from experience. 
But um, I'm never going to say that like I'm young and stupid because that's absolutely not what it is. I have a functioning eyes, a functioning eyes, ears, brain. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I've done, I've done other things. I've been in other, I've been in other like groups and uh, like niches, not just like web design and stuff. So like I, I, I'm definitely young, you know, only 28 compared to other people. But like it's kind of interesting the way that just, just the what I've, what I've kind of seen and everything like that. So, so yeah. Um, and I want to make a point too, goes back to the other thing. This probably isn't in my best interest to make these types of videos. I mean, there's a ton of other things I could be doing. I could be like making more money through the agency, through, you know, actual technical content. And again, I really appreciate you guys. If you're not watching this, it's totally fine. If you don't give a shit about the stuff, you just here for the portal videos. That's fine. They're coming. I apologize. But like I'm doing other things and then I'm also trying to stay in, you know, up to date with the WordPress shit. And then like you start following people on Twitter, you start looking in this Slack group and it quickly takes up most of your time, which is not ideal, uh, especially when you're not an employee and you have to continue to, you know, make money for yourself rather than just collect a paycheck. So, and it, I, I, there's no right way or wrong way there. I'm just saying the reality of my situation. Um, so yeah, the point that I'm trying to make there is I'm like, you could say that like, uh, I'm, I'm making this video to, to kind of I'm trying, I'm literally just trying to document and again, maybe provide some value, but there will be more technical value too. I, I, I promise you. Okay. There's more stuff coming in that. Just getting a couple of these things out of the way here before we maybe dive into some more specific stuff. Um, and I, and I want to make this point too, because like, you're probably thinking at this point, Mark, why are you, why are you even subjecting yourself to this? Like the stuff that you're seeing here or like, 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 why are you, why are you making these videos just because like, like, do you enjoy them? I'm going to tell you this. I must be like like a very weird person because I genuinely really do enjoy having the conversations that are that are tough or having the conversations where people don't agree or reading conversations where people don't agree and trying to like understand the way that people act and think and the things that they do. Um, I genuinely enjoy that. I mean, it is exhausting sometimes, but I genuinely enjoy it. And I love that. I've loved that for such a long time, every single time I've consumed a piece of media, whether it's video or, or, you know, reading something or whatever, I'm always trying to understand that I'm always trying to remember, which a lot of people, a lot of people forget this, that everyone is human and everyone has their own perspective, their own lived experience, their own worldview, their own trajectory, as far as where they, they move. And again, obviously a lot of this is going to be a little bit more meta than specifically WordPress stuff, but We'll get more to that. And I just genuinely love trying to understand that. And I think that that is a skill that can be applied so globally that it, it's circum, you know, it supersedes all WordPress stuff. Like it's not even, it's, it's past it. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, uh, Anthony, what's up brother? Thank you for joining. Um, hi Mark. Love to hear your insight. I tend to stay away from politics. Things will distract me, but if it will affect me a long time, as a long time WP current, then please, by all means, keep doing us informed. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about, you know, the US election here or anything like that in this in this thing. Um, but, you know, th there's there's just it's 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 I say I say the word politics because people use the word political a lot of times when they talk about like different apparatuses or just like different like, oh, like, you know, you're you're never going to get promoted. It's political like that type of thing. Um, I just see parallels in that, which I'm, I'm sure WordPress is not like um, unique in that way. Other things obviously have that. Isaac, what's up, brother? Thank you for thank you for hopping in, man. Um, so yeah, um, but back to it. Like, I genuinely enjoy like having these conversations, trying to provide you guys some value with this with these insights, having conversations with you, uh, and that's why I'm doing it. And I just I I don't understand why exactly, but I love I love trying to like you know understand people at more of like a human behavior perspective and their again their experience how their experiences have made made them have the worldview and the thought process that they do have now and again that just it very it shines through once you start reading so much shit so it's kind of interesting um okay now and real quick on the politics thing okay so like i i have been building websites since like 2018 and we're not talking about politics here but it is again, like, it's one of those things. We're not talking directly about politics, but I do want you to think about this. If, at least if you're in the U S like there is a, there has been like a political, like great, like it's just ramped up. It's always been probably, you know, amped, but it's ramped up probably in the last like eight years or everything. And 
who, who knows what the fuck's going to happen in November. Okay. We're not talking specifically about politics, but like take the framework of that and think like super abstractly why that is, why that is the way that it is. It's because people have different worldviews, different experiences and all that sort of stuff. Then take the, just the concepts, not like a right or left thing, take that and put that into the WordPress space. And then you have basically the exact same thing with like, at, maybe in different, um, different variations, but like core versus page builder as just like an example, right? So that's what I mean by like, it's worse than US politics in a way, because it's like, it's actually to, to a, to a, uh, it's, it's important to us, but to a, a much greater degree, it's way less fucking important <laughs> than like actual, you know, geopolitical and domestic political issues. Okay. So it's just funny. It's just funny in that way. When you really take a step back, it's like, we are arguing over very stupid shit. Like it, it, you know, it's insignificant in a lot of ways. Um, so that's, that's why it's like kind of funny. Like it is important to us, but it is, but on a, on a grander scale, it's, it's much smaller. So, um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, to, I, I don't know what that language is. I apologize. Um, I hope it's, I, I hope it wasn't like a, I hope, I hope, I don't know. I hope, I hope it wasn't anything weird. Um, but thank you for joining. Uh, but I can't read that language. I apologize. Um, so my, my like thought process here and my, my, I, I spent some time in like the, 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 the political realm. Not, I wasn't like running for office. I'm just like, you know, everyone has like, you just even passively, you know, every four years, at least in the U S you like take in, you know, thoughts and like opinions and all that sort of stuff. And I've spent some time there. I've had to remove myself from that realm because of the level of, I don't want to use the word toxicity, but because of the level of just like differing opinions and no compromise most of the time. And I see some of that going on in the WordPress community. And it worries me because I could just stop fucking caring about the community part and just get the fuck out and like go, you know, make websites or whatever. Cause there's a lot of people that do that. That's just not in my nature. Like, especially if it's like something that I have to do, like I genuinely enjoy this stuff. So like, again, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment and wanting to like examine it more, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. So my thing though, has always been like, do not join a fucking team. Do not join a tribe because now hear me out. Okay. That's if you clip that, that's not the full context. Okay. The, the idea there is my current theory on this. My hypothesis is that if you join a tribe, then you are going to be so it's going to be an echo chamber. Like it's, it's an echo chamber and you're only going to hear that. And it's not good. So I would always, 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 just like I say with my content on like just random technical videos, do not just fucking listen to me. Don't just listen to somebody else. Get like 20 opinions and then formulate your own fucking, you know, persona off of that. Okay. Again, last thing I'm probably going to say about the politics thing specifically is that the, 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 the camps like a right and left camp or like a core and page builder camp has really fucked up a, a lot of like, I think our, our experience in this, in this community, because it's so tribal just by nature that you may think page builders are the way to go, or you may think core is the way to go. If you don't get those other opinions and you don't actually see them at face value, no matter how they're presented, it's difficult. It's difficult to actually have like a, a, a productive evolution of a community if, if we're doing that. So, and again, I'm, I'm, I would love to offer solutions. I may, we may get to some, this isn't me like telling you that I know what the fuck is going on though. Like I'm just, I, I know what is happening, what I see and hear with my eyes and what I read. Unfortunately, again, because walls of text, not my, not my favorite, but, but I don't have like a ton of solutions. If I come up with some solutions, I will maybe pose them. And then I'm sure a ton of people will not like them. Like, it, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it, it starts to get a little redundant there because like a lot of like, there's just no, there's like, there's gotta be some compromise and like some, like looking at people, looking at people's like words without interpreting them differently. It's like, there's a lot of shit there. Uh, Isaac, what's up, brother? Um, ironically, that's why WordPress is where it's at. And this is why I decided to disengage completely. Yeah, I mean, honestly, not a bad approach. Seriously. I mean, it's kind of, again, the parallels are ridiculous, like to just like the United States. Like it's it's almost like it's too big and there's just too many opinions. And because of that, 
not everybody's going to agree. So then you get like tribes and then like, even, even though there's tribes and, and, and there's like a level of like, I want to almost say like inclusivity. There's also like simultaneously not because everybody has their fucking preferred tool. And for some reason, there's a lot of emotion based around that. And, but there's, it's, it's like, there's emotion. Okay. So here, let me, let me, let me, let me riff on this for a quick second. Okay. So I was an elementor, right? And then I realized that bricks was going to make me feel more like a developer. And actually not only that, it was going to teach me more about actual fucking HTML and CSS. Okay. I realized that. So I made a business decision to move there. And like, I wasn't like super ingrained in the elementor community, but like, it's almost like you, there's like, almost like, it's almost like there's like a, a, a sense of like expected loyalty, not an elementor, but just like in, in the different things. If we're getting real, like meta with it, it's like you, you, if you use certain thing, it's almost like you're expected to be loyal to it when it, it honestly, but it, it extends further than it. it extends into like WordPress. Like if I, I've kind of said this and I was like, if Webflow beats out WordPress, I'm a business I'm like, and I'm still in the business of building websites. It probably makes sense for me to move to Webflow. Like that just makes like a business, you know, there, there would be absolutely be like a, uh, you know, a set of decisions that would make sense to move there if that was the case. Right. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying if that was the case, but then that is all often, I feel like been kind of met with like, well, you're not committed to like WordPress. And I'm like, well, we have a different opinion on like what, what that actually like means and stuff. And then like, you know, you, if you if you're trying to contribute, and also the there's I have a lot of thoughts here. Can I apologize? I've tried to I've tried to organize it, but it's not gonna fucking happen. Like the the idea of contributing to WordPress, like is what I do not contributing to WordPress? Like is it not like I understand it's not like writing code. Is it not contributing though? Is making YouTube videos about technical things like in the WordPress ecosystem or offering you know I'm not saying I contribute like. I'm not saying it's the same as somebody fucking writing lines of code for core. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying like, it's not like moving it forward at all. It's not like invoking any thought from the people in the community. So my, that's my point. It's just like, we have these words and they just like, they're the meanings are so like, it's like they mean something, but at the same time, there's no definition and it's so strange. And it, it, that's throughout that's, that's throughout too. It's like, we're changing names of shit. We're changing meanings. It's very interesting. Um, Isaac, uh, this is why I just use paid tools. I'm delegating and caring about WordPress to them. No, hundred percent. I mean, I've always preached that as well. Like you don't, you, you can't back to the technical side of it. Like you can't expect that like a free tool is going to have the same level of obviously support and care and everything like that. Like it's like, it's such a weird spot because like WordPress is open source means obviously different things, but like doesn't make money. There's people that are like volunteering from what I understand, but also people that are sponsored by companies so that's a weird conflict there. And then, and if I'm wrong on this, let me know. But, but, but the, but the point being that money is an incentive, like, and, and if a person is a good business person, they're getting paid to support paid tools. And if they don't, then you obviously have a complete, complete direct reason to, to not use that tool. So, um, Yes, it's your way of contributing. I appreciate that, Matt. Same right back at you, brother. Um, Brennan, uh, humans are tribal by our very nature. We want the stuff we are familiar with to succeed while simultaneous resistance change or influence from outsiders, whether it's software or a sports ball team. Yeah. I mean, I feel that. I feel that, Brennan. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say that I'm kind of like that as well. But I would just say that personal opinion if you can surpass that a little bit, I mean, I think you should be kind of tribal to your family, I guess, you know, I'm assuming, you know, obviously, but like, but like, if you can kind of get past that, I'm not talking about you specifically, Brent, I'm just saying general you, like if anybody could get past that, then I think it opens up a new, a new, a completely new fucking outlook on WordPress, on life, whatever. And because it's weird, here's why it's weird. It's because like, I've often thought that I don't have many like friends, but I have like a ton of acquaintances. And what that is, again, we're getting, we're getting very meta. I, hopefully you like this, if not, whatever. But like, if you, if you, if you, if you go to that realm, then you're like, I don't like, I have a ton of people that like I, I add value to and they add value to me. And like, 
you know, obviously if something was terrible and like you had to help somebody, obviously you do that. But like the tribal nature of I'm riding or dying with this fucking page builder or this product or this open source software, like that just like, it, it takes it to a new level. And it's, and it, it, and honestly, I think what it does is it's, it's, it's invoking an immense amount of emotion that only complicates things most of the time. If you're married to somebody, you should probably have a, you should probably have an emotional connection. If you are using a tool, I don't know if you should have an emotional connection. Now there's a counter argument or at least a sub sub counter argument where like, if you create a paid tool, you're going to obviously want that fucking thing to succeed because that is your livelihood. And there's, that's a whole rabbit hole of like a ton of things. And there's right ways, wrong ways. I feel like, or, you know, better ways, worse ways to kind of do that. But the tribal nature of that, that it creates, the tribalness is fed off of emotion. It's not fed off of logic normally. Like it, it, it kind of can be, but normally it's like, there's like a logical approach an emotional approach. There's those, those are weighing. And if you try to stay towards the middle of that, like you have a good logical perspective on things, but you're, but you also have the ability to be, to emote, I guess, when, when needed, I feel like that's better. So and this is super high level. I don't know, but, but, uh, yeah, that's why I'm not exactly sure what that was, but I think that was the page builder stuff or, Correct me if I'm wrong, Isaac. Um, Nick, WordPress does make money. Clearly, automatic makes enough money to keep buying other companies. The whole open source line at this point is just a way to keep development done by a lot of free labor. Okay, so I don't know the accuracy of that. However, I appreciate the comment, Nick. And what I'm going to say to that is, I don't know if WordPress makes money. Other people know this, but I don't know if WordPress makes money. Cl automatic is a pro is a for profit company. I'm 95 percent positive of that. The open source thing, this is, this is, I've had this problem too. And I'm, I'm thinking that I've found the answer to it. Open source doesn't fucking have anything to do with money. Like it, it open all open source. I feel like means is that you can take the, you can look at, and you could use fork maybe the, I don't know what the name is, the entire code base. And you could go do your own fucking thing, which maybe we should do. Maybe like more people should do. I'm not saying me. Like maybe, maybe that's the fucking answer. I don't know. Because open source, I think, is as a concept like a good idea. But I don't know if it has anything specifically to do with money. But nevertheless, that is like a, that is like a good a good point. Um, and the follow up there, uh, not hating on automatic for doing it, but it's but don't gaslight me into believing that this is some charitable endeavor. I do partially agree with that um, because automatic definitely makes money. And there's like, it's, it's, I don't, let's not even fucking cast blame. Okay. Let's not cast blame. Let's, let's just, and then and Matt says tired line. Um, yeah. And then open source is not meant to be terrible. Uh, Brian probably knows more about this than I do. Uh, automatic also pays most of the bills. Are they making money or are they mostly raising money? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, but let's, let's not even fucking use the word gaslight. Okay. Let's not even think about that. This is the thing, and maybe this is a part, maybe this is a this is the puzzle piece that I can be potentially, because I don't know, I, I haven't heard it this way. Maybe it's not like the gaslighting thing, right? Maybe it's more just like lack of transparency. Either it's normal, you know, normally when these things type of happen, normally when these things happen, there's kind of like a two trend thing. It's either and okay, I'm going to say this and I'm not saying this about people. I'm saying this about the situation. Okay. Normally when you have a situation like this, where like people are confused, right. Or like, just like uninformed on the situation. Normally it's two ways. Okay. It's either incompetence, which doesn't mean like you're an idiot. It just means like you, like the job that isn't being done, which is, you know, X, Y, Z. I'm going to, I'm going to explain what I mean. It's either incompetence or malice. Okay. It's either like we didn't do that just because we didn't do it. It's not like it, we weren't fucking trying to not do anything or it's malice. Like it's actual deception and ma manipulation. Okay. And it's, it's evil. Okay. It's either being done or something is either being done or not being done because it's evil or something is being done or not being done just because we didn't know any better. Okay. I always, 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 always give the benefit of the doubt and say, again, incompetence. Don't look into the fucking word meaning like, Oh, like people are idiots. That's not what I mean. It's just, 
Like that, that's just what happened. Okay. Now, what I mean is where I'm, where I'm going with that as a hypothesis is that I had came in this community and I would venture to say, I have been one of the like deepest into this shit. Like I'll talk about it. Like I, like I've gone to hallway hangouts. I'm in this fucking Slack group. I'm, I'm looking at everybody on, on, on Twitter and everything like that. Like, and I don't even know what the fuck's going on. Okay. And I, again, I'm new. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's like a long-term thing. Like you have to be here for several years before you understand what's going on. Okay. But I don't like that. And maybe you can't change that. And if, if that's the answer, I hate that fucking answer, but I, I don't believe it. Like I genuinely don't believe it. Like if I spent another year in here, I think that I could formulate some sort of like basic fucking thing to explain how this works. And maybe it already exists. If it already exists, please drop a link in the chat. If you can drop a link, if you can't DM me or something and tell me where it is. And then I will promote the fuck out of it because I've promoted the fuck out of this Slack. I thought was ex extremely valuable. And I know that this is an intricate thing. Okay. I know that there is a million things going on. The, 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 um, the essence of a, of an open source project is just shit everywhere and a million different concerns and all that. Again, I, I don't I don't understand how that ultimately some of that ultimately results in a good product because how can you be working on forty five things at one time? But okay, I understand the I understand that it's not it's not like that. I understand it's not a proprietary uh, product for for a specific niche. I get all that, but I'm just saying like you at least need to like if that is the case, one hundred percent. There's got to be like a fucking disclaimer before you put up the first. Like before you even get into WordPress and I would do this on every fucking video that I talk about WordPress where it's like, be aware, it's not like your normal shit because it's been painted so heavily as almost something else in a way it's been painted because all these proprietary products are on top of WordPress and they're, and they're making money from it and, and they're fantastic products, but they're all built on top of this literally a different business model product. It's not, I mean, I don't even know if you, I don't know if it's necessarily a business model, but it's a different type of technology, different license of technology. It's, well, I guess maybe it's not a different type. Maybe they're all GPL. But the point is that like, I feel like you get what I'm saying. Like it's, it's literally different. So, um, look up four freedoms of open source. Okay. I will look that up, Matt. I think I've seen that, but, um, is that going to answer my question though? Like specifically uh freedom modify yeah i've heard this um run copy distribute study change okay yeah i'll look into that more um i don't know if this is is this specific to wordpress because I, I that's a that's a good resource but i don't think that's exactly what i was talking about okay so um what else do we have here because i have a shit ton of notes and now, now i'm off track um I didn't say this before, but I, but anything that I continue to say here, cause I could, I could talk about this literally all day also. Um, well, like what I was going to say is I'm not talking about people. Okay. People are human. People evolve. People make mistakes. People are people. Okay. I appreciate every single perspective that I've ever gotten. Okay. If I've ever like commented on something, if I've ever said something in, in text and anybody has ever not liked it, it's probably because text sucks as a medium to communicate actual ideas like that. But um, I am just in this and I'm passionate about like what I'm doing and I want to try to provide that value. And I really do appreciate every single perspective that I've that I've gotten from other people. Um, I'm trying to examine like ideas, behavior, worldview, and 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 not put like a label specifically on like, oh, this person exhibited this behavior. I'm just like categorizing in my head and seeing like, okay, how is, how, how does somebody like a, somebody that's been in this industry for 20 years, think about this versus somebody that's been it for five years and never touched the fucking community. Like, like how does that all work out? Right. And then there's a million other things because people are human. They have external lived experiences that factor in quite heavily. So it, it, there's no real, like I could, I could do this forever. There's no, what I'm saying is if you're, if you're, watching this and you want to like if you're interested in it there's there's no answers really to it which could be terrible for some it's, it's, I, I don't love that there's no real answers but i do think there's like progress like to kind of like just think or at least like open communications of dialogue but some will say that that's not productive so i don't 
I don't know. It's it's I'm really really crazy. Last thing about that the point too is like I'm not mad about any of this. Like anything that I've seen like specifically yesterday or like anything like that. I'm not like mad about it. Again, I'm tr I try to take emotion completely out of it. It may sound like I'm like getting emotional, but like I'm just like passionate about what I'm saying. Like I'm not like mad about any of it. Um, I'm a little disappointed slightly in just like kind of some of the things that I saw, but like again, it's 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 again at, at a broader scale. It's not like specifics. And, and I'm mostly just trying to achieve clarity and trying to pass that clarity on if there is any to be, to be passed, to be achieved and passed. So I don't know. Um, I already said that. Let's see what else. Um, is all of this productive? Uh, probably not, but probably more of it is than isn't. Because if you're going to do this, you could be completely lazy, fair hands off and not like touch anything, not like think about this at all. But again, I still go back to the fact that if you don't know about this and you are in the business of WordPress, like you should kind of give a shit a little bit about what's going on in the Slack or what's going on in, in GitHub and stuff like that. And you do have an opportunity to actually make a difference, like actually change and like contribute things if you if it makes sense to do that, if you want to report issues and all that sort of stuff. Like, so you should, you should be, you should care a little bit. So I don't know if I'm doing a great job at like spreading that message. I'm, I'm probably doing it slowly more than, 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 uh, than well, but like, again, there's probably not a million people. There's probably like 10,000, like Matt says, that actually care about some of that stuff. But my thought is like the, 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 should we, or shouldn't we, I feel like you, you maybe it, it probably make, it's probably a better argument to, that you should to some degree, as I mentioned in that other video. Um, okay. All right. There is this weird thing that goes on, I feel like on, on Twitter and, and then, and then Slack is like heavily kind of like, you know, like the, obviously the core centric of it, but there's like this weird thing that like, I, I, I don't, I might be wrong. I don't really feel like I, I am here, but I feel like the statement there are objective truths and then there's subjective things. And I feel like there's all like the world is gray, but there is some black and white. There is some objective stuff or at least like something so objective that it's like 99.9% .9 objective, like that it should be thought that way. And it is the right way, right? Nobody likes to hear the right way. Okay. But like, there's like a right way to do things. And then if it's it's like so objective in that manner that if you don't agree with that you're 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 definitely you're definitely like kind of like it's like it, you're being quite radical okay and i feel like a lot of times i see things and i'm like that makes a lot of sense i can't even think of an example where that wouldn't be true and then people are still arguing that i don't have any specific examples right now but i just see that as a common theme so it'd be like nice if we could like try to think about things a little bit more objectively in certain areas. There's a fuck ton of stuff that's gray. Let's not all let's not also argue about the stuff that's pretty straightforward, okay? So that's the first thing. Um most people I didn't do a fucking poll on this and nobody would respond to a poll that I put up necessarily anyway, but like this is a hypothesis. The hypothesis is most people want Gutenberg to succeed. Okay? And WordPress in general. If they don't, they're kind of an extremely short-sighted because if that doesn't succeed, then by the transitive property, okay, WordPress is probably not going to succeed or WordPress is going to take a step back in some way, right? Like if this thing doesn't get better and doesn't continue to evolve, I don't know why we need to keep, I keep need, I need to keep reiterating this, but most people, I'm, I'm very confident. Most people want it to succeed because if they, if it doesn't, that means their ass, they're going to have to go somewhere else. They're going to have to do something else. I've, I've, I've yet to see someone. I'm in a lot of groups. I have yet to see someone say Gutenberg, WordPress core, block editor, insert, whatever name. I've yet to see someone say, I don't want this to be the way forward. I'm sure it's out there. 
but I've not, I've not seen it. I, I don't want this to be the way forward. I, it sucks. I'll like, I'll never use it in, in a serious enough sense to be like, it's not going to get better. And I don't want it to get better. I've seen people say, maybe it's not the right thing to do, but that's a little bit of a different situation. So we need to stop fucking caring about that. Like, like that's not, that's not a good argument. It's not that people don't want to succeed. That's definitely not it because what do I have right here? The, the weird, like page builder people don't think that Gutenberg is good right now. Just logically, why would they in a lot of ways? Because they're used to something. It's human behavior in that, in that regard. Functionally, there's probably some differences. They'd have to learn a new thing, all that sort of shit. Okay. And then when you talk to actual Gutenberg um, advocates, they actually agree with that. They actually agree with that. And they say it needs work. It definitely needs work. We can all agree on that. Conversation should like fucking like definitely change right there. Okay. <laughs> like that, like we are in agreement. Okay, great. And again, human a lot of human behavior here, stuff here, but like the conversation should definitely change right there because now it's like, okay, we're in agreement. You're using your tool. We're using our tool. We're trying to build our tool up. We agree on this. A lot of times it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't actually manifest that way though, which is interesting. So that that's kind of confusing to me, but like they actually like actually agree. And then the, and then what happens is that page builder people say, Hey, we got this cool fucking thing over here. Be real cool if you put that in there. And like, I guess depending on the way that is presented, which is understandable, not, I understand human emotion. I get it. Depending on the way that that is presented, core people get upset. And then I don't understand that. Like, I, I don't understand that. So, I'm just trying to figure out like how we can how we can have that conversation better, and I guess the answer is just put in the Slack or put in the GitHub. I mean, I guess, um, and we'll see what that ultimately ends up looking like. Um, I wonder what subset of users percentage would actually prefer more CMS functionality versus more design control. Another incredible point by Brendan. Okay. The thing was built to be a CMS. I am not saying it cannot evolve. Why can't we duplicate fucking pages? Can we duplicate pages? I know we can't duplicate pages or posts or some shit. I, I can't even remember because I've just forgot about it. Why can't we do that? Like, like, and again, I don't want to be the asshole. That's just complaining. I'll go in and I'll look right after this. See if, if somebody has the fucking GitHub thing, uh, if there's an issue for that then let me know. If not, I'll create one. But I'm just saying like, like that is something that's like really interesting. I literally feel like, and I wasn't here. Okay. Wasn't around when this happened, but was it, Hey, fuck Wix and Squarespace five years ago, whatever Wix and Squarespace are catching up on us. They're not even catching up. That's, that's actually bullshit. The numbers are crazy, but the thing is like, per, like perception. Okay these things are like doing great. Like they're, they're marketing out of this world and like they're making it seem so easy and all that sort of stuff. And now AI and it's like, totally get that. Okay. That actually sounds like more of a business decision. Truthfully to me, that actually sounds really like a business decision, like a for-profit business decision where you're like, Hey, these guys are, these guys are doing this stuff. We should be doing that stuff too. We should abandon slightly this, this stuff that we're doing very, very well. Don't worry about the UI of the, of the, you know, stuff initially, the CMS portion. Let's just make a totally different, uh, you know, design experience. So I don't know, but is that how it happened? Is that, it, it, did we just say like, we looked at these other ones, we saw that they were marketing. We saw that people were getting excited over there and we're like, fuck, we need to like do something like that. And then Gutenberg was born. I don't know, but it seems like that would be kind of logical, but you guys tell me on that. Um, Technically, it was built as a blogging platform that moved to a CMS that moved to something else and is now moving to a site builder. So lots of history there. Okay, fair point. Um, yeah, 
I mean, blogging, CMS. I mean, I don't, you know, honest to God, I don't even know if we can really, obviously it's a CMS, but was there, I mean, I guess you can do it, but why was there never a UI? Was it just because there was always like custom post type UI? First of all, custom post types as a random technical side, which probably everybody in here knows, like if you're not using that, just try that. That's a whole fucking new thing. That's a whole new world. But anyway, um, why why was that like the prioritization of everything is just kind of confusing and i and i genuinely just don't know how it how it happens is it literally just like we put the issues in github and then it's like the most upvotes wins or something i feel like that is how products work so maybe it's not how open source works i don't know uh, i'm not sure uh nick or why can't we add tags and categories to pages without a plugin um well that's a good point i think you could can you do that in, uh, maybe you can't do that in native, but my point is, but, but it kind of goes, it goes to the same thing. It's like, what I was going to say is like, I know that, that WordPress, I guess in its, I don't know. I don't know. Brian, Brian would definitely know more than me. Um, the, the, the core functionality of WordPress, like if you're actually deving in PHP or whatever, like you can create, I guess, custom post types, like posts as a default. And then if you added like jet engine or ACF or whatever, and you added like, um, you know, services or what have it. Is that the same thing technically on like a code base situation? We don't need to get into this deeply. But my point is that like that was never, I guess, addressed, never like built in. Like there's like custom fields, like WordPress custom fields, but I I've never used them. I've uh, The consensus that I've heard on them is that they're just limited. So it's like, I don't, like it was a blogging platform. Okay, it was probably the best thing I was doing. And then it was a CMS kind of like with that sort of stuff. And now, and now it's just changed. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to see where it continues to evolve. Um, Mike, uh, there has been a desire to evolve WordPress for over 10 years now. This was not a decision that was made because of where Space Trick was doing it. Well, I wasn't here for that. Um, I appreciate you joining him. I wasn't here for that. And um, that's interesting. So is the idea there that they were like ahead of those other platforms, even even more so to make like a, a, des a design like a better design experience? If so, that's, that's fucking amazing. Um, but again, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of questions that I, that I just still have there. So I want to, obviously I want to see it to continue to evolve. I think the vast majority of people do, if they don't, it's kind of short-sighted. That's my opinion on that. Um, I got, I got this one. I got another one that, that comes up all the time is there's like an, there's like, um, Gutenberg is for everyone. And then, and then at a certain point, after potentially a long discussion, it becomes, okay, Gutenberg isn't for you. Now, I don't know how to, I don't know how to unpack that one. Um, because There's there's a there's another there's another like point to it that I don't know I just maybe it's not for maybe 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 it's just maybe there's a different way to say it maybe it's not for you right now maybe that's maybe that's a better way but it's just interesting that like it the 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 decision kind of dilutes to that. Like it's, it's for everyone. It's kind of being built for that. But, but I, I honestly, I, I kind of think I've just heard so many different, so many different thoughts on this and chime in guys. Cause you, you, you might, you might know more than me. How is it for everyone now? Is it for everyone later? Maybe it's a semantic arguments, not important, but the point is that like, I've heard it both ways. I've heard it's like literally at, like for everyone, but at the same time, like it's not because it's built like, like I, I've literally read that the, like, as an example, the UI is built for people that don't know what they're doing. Like that, you know, are used to just a you know, other regular, build, which is fine. No, no problems with that. I'm just saying like, I don't like there's like, the problem is I feel like the, the overarching theme here is this shit is so big and there's no like direction on how we're going to present this shit to people. And again, you can respond to that by saying, well, there's no fucking marketing. There's no, there's no budget for all that. I mean, I get that. That's fine. But are we just going to continue to let these be, these communication pieces be pro problematic? I mean, fuck, if I was just told what to say, like if I was just told exactly like this is how we're 
positioning this and I'm trying to get all that information from like a Slack channel. And I was in the data liberation uh, fucking hangout yesterday with five people, right? Like I'm in those things and I'm trying to understand from the automatician or whoever is Jordan did a great Jordan Gillum. Great, great stuff yesterday, by the way, um, in there. Like I'm trying to understand that and I'm just maybe it's maybe I'm too fresh. Maybe I don't really think so, though, because I know people that have been in here for a while that 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 don't that don't say something consistently in that regard anyway, either. And again, the whole thing is new, right? The whole thing's relatively new. So I'm being, again, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to like, uh, I'm not even trying to give necessarily opinions here. I'm just trying to observe. I'm trying to achieve clarity. And maybe that's unattainable, which is difficult for me to, you know, digest there. But I don't know. It's kind of a, it's just a, it's a really fucking interesting place. Really interesting. Um, I want to talk about that uh, day liberation thing, because that's another really spicy one. Um, so here's the thing. I got to take a sip. Here's the thing. I I do I do absolutely take issue with this one. Okay. And I, again, I'm happy to. I want to be a man of my word. And yesterday, I put up a video about unplugging the keyboard, getting on, and having actual live debates with people. Okay, and I'm going to talk extensively about that as well. But as as a pre thought to that, uh, I'm more than happy to bring people on the channel and chat because I'm not trying to be fucking right. I'm trying to understand. I am going to absolutely push back though, because like I do have some opinions based on my eyes and ears. But I'm but I'm not trying to be an asshole. Okay, hopefully you don't think that, right? But if you do, sorry. But I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm trying to literally understand something that does not seem very understandable. And we're all very, very talented fucking people in this community. And the fact that we haven't like been able to kind of like wrestle that and like get that into some degree. Again, I'm not saying a beautiful picture. It's nothing's ever like that. Fucking products aren't like that. But I'm saying like, it's just, it's a little too much. It seems like, and I don't know if that's just happened over time. I'm sure it has. It's huge. It's a fucking incredibly uh, successful project, but that's just what I'm seeing. So. Um, the thing I want to talk about though, specifically though, because I, I have a heart I've, I've, I have after my, after my, after what I saw yesterday, specifically at the, um, data liberation, uh, hallway hangout, which if you're not going to these hallway hangouts, you should be going to these fucking hallway hangouts because these people are doing really good work. They're at least opening the dialogue for discussion, regardless of what you think of the progress or anything like that. You should absolutely go to them. Um, go to the Slack. And go to, I think they're normally in outreach, but they, they might be in other ones. Anyway, I saw a data liberation one. I'm like, hmm, I heard of that term. And that seems kind of interesting. But, um, but I didn't, uh, but I, I didn't, I didn't know the extent of it. Um, Peter here, uh, keep trying. I'm sorry. I missed the recent hangouts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, they're great. You know, if you miss them, obviously they're on replay. I was going to post the, the replay in here, but I don't, I don't think it's up yet. But anyway, um, <laughs> well, we ain't even talking about break dance. Damn it. Ruben, appreciate you, brother. You didn't have to do that. Um, uh, here's my thing. Okay. The data liberation thing. I know this is gonna this is gonna ruffle some feathers, and I don't understand how it's logically gonna ruffle any, but I'm again I'm happy. We'll get I'll sit down with anybody for whatever and just have a chat. Okay. You can educate me. Here's the thing. Just make sure you're not talking about it. I appreciate your work, Ruben. <laughs> uh, uh, so okay, they did liberation. I went on this meeting yesterday, right? There's only like six people in there. Um and data liberation, from my understanding, is the idea of you can your data in WordPress can be like moved to Wix, can move. Well, the, the first thing is like it can be moved in. So like the the vision, the twenty year vision, I guess, of moving from Wix or Squarespace or whatever into WordPress is like you go there, you go to like the the playground. This is all theoretical. Okay, there's literally been basically no work done on this yet. You go to you go to like the, the WordPress playground. You click a button effectively, and then you uh, can you, or you put in a, a Wix URL, a Wix site URL, and then you can see how it would import to, to WordPress. I mean, this is the type of shit that is like so incredibly ambitious, incredibly important. But at the same time, I mean, how do you even decide that that's what you're going to do right now? Like of all the other things that there are to do, like. How do you, if you were, if you were going to think of a percentage, 
I mean, obviously, I guess like some random person that wants to do that just just to start contributing. I get it, I get it. But like I'm saying, like, what, like how are we even, how are we even talking about that at this at this level? Like at a super high level, that's all it was. But like they were trying to get you know different thoughts and things like that about like how you know how we can make this right the super the super beginning stages, and the idea was you put in a URL and you see how it moves from WordPress to Wix to WordPress. And then also WordPress out because they are liberators of data. So they don't want, they don't want you to like, you know, it's not just a one way, it's both ways. Um, also like WordPress to WordPress, which I guess generally you kind of have to have a plugin for, or you have to do a different way. There's not really, you know, there's the import thing, but it's like an XML. It's kind of whatever. So they're talking about all of that, but here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm not trying to get you here. Okay. I'm just, literally retorting what an automatician told me, okay? There is this concept, this argument that there is this argument that that the 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 concept of the core block editor and everything is not a page builder. At this point in time, that is the wildest thing I've ever heard in my entire life that it's that it's not trying to do that. If you like if I would this is one of the ones that I would actually probably debate because this is one of those like so deeply rooted semantic arguments that they actually it actually completely starts to crumble almost immediately. It doesn't even make a sense anymore. A page builder designs shit on a page, possibly has like control of like templating and things like that has, you know, maybe styling and all that source shit baked into it. Because like, again, I'm coming from my days, like with the Elementor thing, like you, you, you had a theme and then you could put in like the Elementor theme, you could put in the Elementor plugin and you could, you have a full control. It's like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything in the customizer. I was not doing anything in the customizer for years. It's totally separation. Concerns. Now I know that core Gutenberg, whatever is not a page builder. I got it. Okay. That is like one of those semantic arguments that you look at and then you put your 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 critical thought cap on for five minutes and you're like, this argument is bullshit. Now I want to stop. I don't give a fuck if it's a page builder or not, okay? Or if it or if it does the same thing or not. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. Understand where I'm at here. I don't, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be that. I think it's actually doing a like a great job moving that forward. Where like somebody could walk into WordPress and not have to figure out, you know, oh, do I need Elementor or Beaver? No, fuck, just do it here. I love that. Okay, I, I'm a big proponent of that. But what I'm saying is, when you're in these conversations, we don't understand. I think like the thing that's also getting the wires crossed is we have like people that are that don't have the experience and people that do have the experience, and then we have like advocates trying to talk to both at the same time. They're different audiences. Like you can't talk to a fucking DIYer in a meetup group the same way you could talk to somebody that's been doing this for 20 years with page builders. You can't. So it's it's very weird. But back to my point though, is that if you are going to do the same things as a page builder and then not call yourself a page builder, that is one of the most disingenuous things I've like, and say you're not that thing. It's one of the most disingenuous things I've ever heard in my entire life. Okay. Like it, it doesn't even make, it, it's not even, it's not even an opinion. It doesn't make any sense and it needs to stop. It is absolutely 100% replacing page builders. Now you're going to say something here. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that that's what the the data liberation thing literally said. The third point in that, and you can watch the replay, is we can move from like core to page builders, or I don't even think they actually said that. They said from like page builders to core. I asked a question in there. I'm like, isn't that going to be like really difficult? Like what if you're coming from Bricks or Elementor or Divi or whatever into core? And obviously it's going to be really difficult. It's probably going to take 20 years. But my But my thing is, if that is on the docket, it is the, like it like regardless of what you already saw there, it absolutely is doing the same things. You cannot you could say it's not a page builder. It's the same thing. It is doing the same stuff. So I really need to stop hearing that argument because it's a terrible argument. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's a pointless argument to have because it's already been proven that it's replacing the same functionality. It's actually the whole reason it was built. So again, it's not a bad thing, but it is now. The secondary piece of that is, is it really replacing them or is it doing the same thing? It is 100% doing the same thing. Is it replacing them? I don't think it'll ever replace them. It probably won't. And that's fine. That's beautiful for the environment. Like it's beautiful for the ecosystem. You could use it, you could not use it, whatever. 
unless they like someday like like you know they like oh this is good enough now we're gonna chop this off and you're not gonna be able to like access shit which i don't see them doing that i'm just saying like it's not it is a fucking call it what you want a page motor like it's doing the same stuff we need to stop talking about that it's it's completely inaccurate the argument is completely flawed um I think we should have two products, WordPress Gutenberg, like Wix experience and WordPress developer core for people who page loaders. I mean, Ruben, again, great idea, dude. Um, we already have that in a way. Um, heard this many times, wordpress.org and wordpress.com. There's a very interesting relationship there. Uh, I don't know. You would, you would think that that would be the way to go. I mean, honest to God, like I can't even believe... <laughs> There is definitely an argument for this, but I can't believe that like, it's hard for me. You'd have to like really paint me a good picture to like tell a, a fucking cafe owner to, Hey, go spin up a, uh, you know, a, a server over at hosting or site ground or whatever. And people do this. I mean, I'm just, I just never understood why go spin up a server over there and then then install WordPress and then learn how to use WordPress and potentially third-party tools. Oh, and manage your DNS and your domain. I'm not saying that I want people to be like, like have to, 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 to worry about a web developer. I'm just saying like, and like have to pay money to like a person like me or like an agency or something like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that like, it's never, I've never seen it as like a great use of their time a lot of times, unless they literally have no cash to deploy whatsoever. But even then, like, I would have like I feel like if I was a uh, if I was a a business owner trying to put myself in those shoes, why wouldn't I just go to WordPress.com? Like it, it's just confusing to me how like half of it is a business and half of it is like a you know the project, and and that's literally what that is like WordPress.com and versus org. And why are we not like shoveling people to fucking dot com that like don't like I don't get it. It, it, maybe it's because there's other hosting companies and, and, and you obviously want to give them like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, that part's just confusing to me. But like, I mean, like Ruben said, like, like, you know, kind of two products in a way or two, um, two kind of like settings, you know, in a way two two uh, two UIs, obviously it's difficult to even do one UI, let alone two UIs. I understand that. I don't know. Just thoughts. Okay. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think on that. Um, it's again, it's not a bad thing. Last point on the on the fucking page builder thing. It's not a bad thing, but it is absolutely the same as a page builder. It's doing all the same things. So let's not let's stop saying it's not meant to be that. It's not necessarily meant to replace it, I'm sure. But in order to replace something, you normally have to be better than it. So I don't, you know, there's also a disconnect there at the present time. Okay. Wow, what else do we have? Uh, I really appreciate all the uh the comments and the engagement on this. Um Again, I know that this is uh, only fun for some, but um, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's at least. I think it's more important than it is not. Um, where should we go next? Okay. Um, well, I'll talk about this real quick. I'm I'm literally lost in my notes here, but um, I'll talk about this real quick uh, because I talked about it earlier. Um, so few people know how WordPress actually gets made and improved that loads of people complain about it which, you know, honestly, kind of like myself sort of included in, in a way, but like at the same time, it's like, it's like, it's again, like there's, there's no real, like almost, um, like guide, I feel like to get in there. So if there's some way that I could kind of contribute to that, I, I feel like, you know, a series on just like, Hey, this is, this is actually how WordPress actually gets done. Maybe nobody gives a shit, but here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. When nobody watches this shit organically. Okay. Then every single time that somebody complains about WordPress without actually posting in GitHub repo or this out of the other thing or whatever, whatever, you know, we, we deem the fucking things that you're supposed to do. Then you could just be like, Hey, love that thought. Here's a fucking link to go post that or something. And here is a, more importantly, here is a video series. I don't know how long it would be, but like a quick overview of how this shit actually works. Okay. I know you're probably new to this. Totally fine. I was there as well. I honestly might do this if I could, if I could amass the knowledge to, to put this together, like, well, like, which is very difficult. Cause it seems like it just, again, kind of wild, wild west this shit times. But like, if I could do that, I think that would be a, of immense value. Because then at that point, okay, here's the thing. When you give the people the information and then, then they have two options. 
do the fucking thing, which is great. You've, 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 you've moved the needle forward or don't do the thing. Then it's entirely on them. Like it's entirely on them. Okay. And again, I have personally, I'm not trying to take, take fucking credit for this, but I'm just saying like me, little old me. Okay. On this channel, I have personally, I'm personally responsible for getting people in that fucking Slack group. Okay. And, and, and I will, con and I'm, and I'm also technically personally responsible for getting people to post on GitHub and shit. Okay. So like, it's just me. Like, imagine if somebody else fucking bigger said that shit. What the fuck? So I'm just confused as to why that's not a thing. If we actually want people to contribute, I have a sneaking suspicion though. Okay. Little conspiratorial, but I don't know if we want everybody contributing because like, like, can you imagine? Like, I can't even imagine like the, the, the amount of issues that would be in that GitHub repo. I don't know. That's, that's my thought. I don't know. That could be completely false, a total hypothesis, but I'm just saying like, I'm, I'll tell everybody go in there. Go in there, post whatever you want. Not whatever you want. Post post the shit you don't like. Is that not what that's for? I don't know. Somebody educate me. Um, seems like there's at least three semi-overlapping markets, very basic sites uh, using just Gutenberg, medium complex sites with page builders and complex WP core custom block themes. Yeah, and it's not easy. I'm not saying any of this is easy. Um, but I do think that, you know, with those different, those are different audiences. Those are different people with different needs. So it's like, we're shoving, sometimes we're shoving, you know, uh, square pegs and around holes, it seems like a little bit. And it's extremely easy to go from group one to two, but not from two to three. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I guess the idea would be that three, the things that you can only do in three would, would slowly become something that you can do in one, I guess. Right. That, that would be the concept, but we'll see how that continues to evolve. Um, so there's at least some perceived pr uh, pressure extended on page board ecosystem from below and above. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think all the third party tools and all the page builders made, you know, in large part made, had a big thing and agencies had a big uh, impact on making WordPress what it was. And I don't think WordPress is necessarily shunning that at all per se. Um, but again, but again, um, Imagine you created a simple page builder and you were doing well and you had that on top of WordPress and then WordPress decided, okay, we're going to change our thing. We've always been like CMS, you know, blogging, everything like that. And then we're going to change to more of like the design thing. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it does kind of seem like you are getting now getting competition from the thing that you're already on. Because people care about this. Like, this happens all the time. It's like, what, who was it? Oh, fuck. Um, was it SiteGround? Um, I don't want to drag SiteGround. I don't even care. But it's it's I, I, it might have been SiteGround or somebody. Okay, then they, they offer hosting. But then they also offer, they're offer offering service plans now. So it's like agencies are using that. And then like, oh, shit, now they're undercutting us and providing the service that we offer. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison. But I'm just saying that, like, you have to think about it from multiple perspectives. It's like the, I feel like a lot of people in core don't understand the, the, the mentality of the page builder thing. And again, I'm sitting as somebody who's like, yeah, I've used page builders, but I'm trying to understand all perspectives. I'm not fucking married to anything. I use bricks right now just because again, honestly, it was a learning thing, but, but like you, you can't, you can't expect people to like, like be like totally on board with that when, when you're kind of like doing, you're going directly against the thing that they're they're doing, they're currently using potentially the thing that they're developing if they're the page builder. So it's like, it's just a weird thing. And it's, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm for it. I'm just, it's such a weird situation. Um, that is all kind of transpired. Um, uh, but it's fun. I will say it's fun. Might be aging me, but it's fun. Um, what else do we have here? Um, okay. I'm going to talk abstractly about that one there. If you're on, if you're on core, how do I, how do I phrase this? If you're on, if you're on like heavily team core and you don't see the value in adding perspectives from, from page builder people, I, I, I question your methodology. Like if, if there's not, if there's not a reason, like, cause this is the other weird thing is like, okay, core isn't like meant to be a replacement for page builders. Okay. We got that. But like, what is the actual goal? Like, what is the actual, not even the goal, what's the, um, what's the, the 
if you were like looking in the future, right, five, 10 years, and you and you thought what WordPress was going to be, because obviously we've got to be working towards something. If you sat down and actually asked yourself that question, like, what does it look like? Is it still have page builders in existence? Is it all just fucking AI now? Is it, you know, whatever? And we don't know. But I'm saying like, knowing what we do know, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you, <laughs> this is just funny to me. Like, why wouldn't you just look at, I understand it's not a product. It's not proprietary. It's not for niche audience. Got all that. Okay. Noted. Regardless of that, do you want the thing to succeed? Do you want Gutenberg to succeed? And maybe this is happening, but again, I'm not, I'm not getting it. So you tell me if I'm wrong. Why wouldn't you look at the other, like, like day one of Gutenberg or very early on. And like, even now though, cause it, cause it's definitely changed. Like, why wouldn't you like, look at the things that the things in your ecosystem and abroad, like are doing like really good and then literally just copy them instead of like changing it to a degree where it's like, Yes, certainly. Uh, the fucking iPhone took off the button on the on the thing. That was radical. Get that. But like, there's 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 a little bit of a there's a difference there. I mean, like, is it is it is there a part of that though? Is there a part of that? I wonder. Is there a part of the fact that WordPress is just so big that we could just do whatever the fuck we want, and it doesn't matter? Like, ultimately, we just think that everybody's just going to continue to use it, no matter if it's good, bad, and different, whatever. I mean, are these things like ratified in any way? If they are, I'd love to know how to vote on them. Is it GitHub? Is it Slack? Like seriously, who 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 is the person or, or or team or whatever that decided that like a group button was a good idea? I'm not saying it's a good or bad idea. I don't, I don't fucking know it enough, okay? I'm just saying like as an example because I know that's a thing in there. Like who was the person that decided, again, not person, a team that decided that that was, the, that was a good idea? Was that ratified in any way? Or do we, cause I've heard, this is another funny thing. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you another one. I'm going to tell you another one. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Got some, got some chats from the boys here. Um, I love that page builder people are making the same arguments against WordPress that developers made against, uh, page builder people 10 years ago. Um, I wasn't here 10 years ago, but, um, page builder people are making the same argument against WordPress. Mm, I'd need you to unpack that, Matt. Maybe we could have a podcast on that or something, or just talk about that, but. I don't, I don't see it as being the exact same argument. I see it being a little different, but okay. Um, people made the same argument. Core should copy merge Elementor five years ago. Aren't we glad that didn't happen? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how that, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how that would not be a good thing. I mean, I don't, I mean, I guess we don't like Elementor because of certain things, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't. You couldn't take the good parts. I don't. I don't know. Um, I believe Slack and GitHub are, are barriers for most WP users. It becomes completely overwhelming for those not getting the ability and mindset. Um, another channel for those users that uh, core devs tune into is needed. Yeah, I mean it is extremely overwhelming. Definitely, hundred um, percent. I don't know how you. I don't know how you switch from that. I think they actually. If I if I read the thing correctly, I think there was something before Slack that I obviously didn't know about. Um, so Slack is probably an evolution, like a good thing. It is just extremely overwhelming. I'm, I, I have a lot of, I guess, respect for the people that are in that every day. Cause I, I, it's like, I'm in it, but I'm not like actually, like, I'm not like, like responding to people. It's, it's crazy. Um, okay. Here's the point. There's no voting in WordPress. Open source doesn't mean democratic. You can contribute, but it's owned by one person. See, that's, that's okay. This is absolutely needs, needs clarification then because nobody fucking understands that whatsoever, like at all. Um, so open source is like, you know, kind of free to use forked, whatever. It's not democratic, but you can contribute. So correct me if I'm wrong. Could I just like pop something in like just randomly? Could I just like learn PHP, whatever, just like throw in like a random button that like just doesn't do anything. Like just like a button on the editor that just like Rick rolls somebody, you just click on a new tab opens and never going to give you, can I do that? Cause if I can do that, that's absolutely ridiculous. Okay. But, um, but here's my thing is like, if this, this is, this is another argument all the time. It's total double speak. It really actually kind of like annoys the shit out of me is like, we, we can't go fast. We're not going fast, but we also can't get caught up in actual, we can't spend 10 minutes to decide what is right or wrong, good or bad based off of our user base and our potentially our newer user base, because that's going to hold us up. 
Like it's we we can't go fast, but we can't we can't get input. <laughs> like we can't we can't pull the audience in a sense just to see. I'm not even saying you have to fucking go with what they're saying, but maybe like get an idea. You know what I mean? Like I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe I'm maybe I don't have the maybe I don't have the uh, the full story there. But that but that's uh, that's interesting. So who makes the decisions? Does Matt make all this? Like I'm actually confused on that one. It's owned by one person. You can contribute, but you, but there's no. That's weird. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to know more. Um, these decisions are made in painfully long GitHub issues, not behind closed doors. Okay, fair. Um, anybody can go in though. Anybody can go in there. Obviously, we can chat about that. I'll definitely. I'll definitely post some thoughts in there. That's definitely good. I will definitely say. I will definitely add that to the to my list then of telling people to go in there. Uh, it's not about transparency. It's that there's five thousand moving parts. Okay. I don't know if that's a fixable problem, I guess. Um, you can't do that to core, but you can fork core. Open source means you can make a copy and run with it. Okay. Yeah, definitely heard of that. Appreciate the insight there. Um, I still don't really understand though. Um, if it's demo, if it's not democratic, but it is, but it is just, is it just, if you know about GitHub and if you go into the issues and there's gotta be a decision maker, who is the decision maker? Like I'm not saying I'm not saying from a again it's not a product I get it, I'm, but what I'm what I'm saying is if I open a GitHub issue if I open a GitHub issue right now, how does that get decided on? Is it just the ten people that happen to be working on it or are in it decide? And it's not it, all, GitHub accounts free. You can go in there, you can pose your opinion. But what I'm saying is if I go in there and I have a genuine opinion, let's 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 play a game, okay? Let's play a game. Let's say that I had a hundred thousand people on my channel or my you know followers or whatever random thing and i pulled all of them and i said do you want to do x or do you want to do y and 99 percent of them said y and then i go into the github issue and i say that hey i have ten thousand people i have a hundred thousand people whatever that want to do it this way are 10 people in that thing that are working on this going to outnumber that is that how it works please somebody explain that to me uh Brennan, uh, I won't pretend to understand half of it, but was reading a bit about the XZ backdoor. It's interesting looking at open source, maintaining repositories, burnout, uh, compensation for open source. Okay. Okay. You can try to contribute a feature, but there's no guarantee it'll be merged. The leads of each release make decisions. Ah, okay. And those are picked by Matt or his direct reports. Oh man. Ah oh, man. You know, I've never worked for Amazon, but I have a I have a, I have a very close friend that, that works as a software engineer there. And um I gotta be honest, that sounds pretty similar. To how that operates. So now I'm super confused. Um, because again, talking out, I'm, I'm, I'm more lying on you guys to educate me, but I'm also asking these, these, these questions because I think it's really important. I appreciate every single one of you guys, cause you know more about this than me, but that seems really, really similar to like how a product would work then. We, it's not like a democratic thing where where's, where's, where's my disconnect here. Somebody help me. How is this not like a product when you have CEO, whatever the title is, I apologize if I'm mis mislabeling Matt. Direct reports, project leads, and then people in the comments. But the lead ultimately gets to make the decision. Obviously, I'm actually not, I'm actually not, I'm not even saying that that's a bad way to do it. I actually have no idea how else you would do it. What I'm saying is though, is it, you know, it it's kind of, you guys are kind of double speaking here. Like it's we can't we can't like say that it is you can contribute, but then also you go there and you make a contribution, and then it might like seriously, I'll go in there and I will make a contribution, and if it doesn't get ratified, like okay, like or not ratified, if it doesn't get like chosen, then what is the reason that it didn't get chosen? There's definitely like already a preconceived kind of like path there. How are you supposed to push that? Like, obviously it's nice that we can see those conversations hundred percent. I get that. But is that, is that all we're talking about? Then that's, that's the essence of open source. There's no actual like 
contribution in a way of like, Hey, my idea is interesting. I have a bunch of people that think it's interesting as well. Is that, is that, that's not how it works. Um, disconnect is that you only see from the page builder product perspective and not the millions of people publishing perspective. Okay. Um, we'd have to have a, a chat about that. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what we're talking about there. Um, it seems very product ish to me. So, um, yeah, cool. I don't know, guys, you guys have been extremely educational here so far. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, We'd have to have a chat about that because I don't really, I don't really get that too much. We can, we can compare how both, how both work, but still seems like, I guess the only, the only real actionable solution though, is for me to gather up all the people that have opinions on WordPress. Um, and well, maybe, maybe hang, on, hang on a second, Matt, are you, are you saying that the concept is we have to think about all the people that are publishing WordPress and that's the people that are, th that are driving the decisions. Like that's exactly where it's coming from. We're like, we're building WordPress for the average person and no, and not like agency folk at all. Because here's the other thing, just from a marketing perspective, then how do you, how do you, is your audience, if you're talking about core, just like DIYers then? Is that is that the idea? Because it doesn't, see the, 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 the disconnect there, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, this is the honest disconnect that I feel like a lot of people in page builder world don't understand, is because you have people making like almost DIY content for WordPress, WordPress block editor, which is fantastic. And then you have people making much more complex content for it, like that, you know, the buzzword is react, right? Like you're making custom, whatever blocks and shit, like with react that can, again, confuses people because if they're not in it and they don't understand it, then it's like, well, I'm seeing, this is weird, right? I'm seeing two channels and they're both talking about core. And then you see one that is talking, that is, that is like dragging and dropping shit and like not caring about X, Y, Z, maintainability, scalability, whatever, which is fine. Do whatever you want. Okay. But that's the one channel. And then the other channel is we're going to fucking figure out how to merge, you know, or do like crazy API calls, react stuff, things like VS code and all that. So my point is, I'm trying to, again, under, I'm trying to give you my perspective on this is that those are the two things that people are seeing with the commonality of like core and the block editor. But then I guess the disconnect there is just the fact that I guess it can do all of those things, but it, I, I still think that that's the one thing that like it just confuses the shit out of people. It's like it can do like everything. It's like a jack of all, master of none type thing. It's very, very interesting. <sighs> Contributions aren't just my idea gets merged. Getting in there and having a conversation, introducing new ideas, even if they don't take them, making small tweaks. This is what makes WordPress. Got it. Yeah, fair. Um, you guys are just much, much better typers than I am. Much more much more, uh, willing to get in there and just type for days. Um, I have a lot of respect for that, but I don't know if I can really do that. Is there ever any, uh, there ever any like, uh, video meetings other than the hallway hangouts where we can, where we can do that? Cause I would love to voice my opinion, um, rather than type it and read walls of text. But I guess that's maybe how it works. I don't know. Um, people like you and me that get super passionate about these opinions are because our livelihood relies on it. But millions of people use WordPress to publish words on the internet or small sites. No, certainly. Again, um, aware of that. That's how, that's part of the reason. Again, there's a ton of reasons. Part of the reason why it got to be so big. Uh, but, um, I don't know, man. I, I just, I just, I don't think word, I don't know. If, nobody's going to know this. Nobody's going to know these numbers, but I've been asking for these numbers for a long time. I would want, I want to know how many sites, WordPress sites, active WordPress installs are built from DIYers versus agencies. I, th you know what I think? Mm. I think, I actually think if I had to guess, total hypothesis here, if I had to guess, I bet you the percentage, I bet you the percentage dropped on the DIY side over the last five years. 
And now the idea is that it's trying, we're trying to go back up. Maybe that's the whole thing. Did I just unlock that? Is that the whole thing? Is that agencies are just a byproduct? Agencies using WordPress are just a byproduct of WordPress being an option, but they've never been actually specific. It's never been actually specifically for them. So we democratize publishing because we want everybody to be able to do it. So it's more so for the DIYer. And the reason, one of the reasons, I don't know if it's actually reason, but like in my mind, one of the reasons for this, for Gutenberg and everything was because the percentage of DIYers versus agencies, like if you, if you look at that, the percentage of DIYers was going down because people were like, oh, I could, WordPress is free, but I got to do this shit to do it versus just going to Squarespace or Wix because it's actually marketed directly for me. I mean, again, I'm just saying that like, here's what I actually should do is I talked to a buddy of mine that's, I don't know, 30, 35, 36 or something. I don't know. It was 38, maybe two kids, different industry. Okay. And I said, I'm making WordPress content on the internet. Like I'm in the WordPress group and stuff like that. You know what his response was? His response was WordPress. That's still a thing. So it's just interesting to me. You know, it's like, I fucking think about this shit every day. And this guy doesn't even know what the hell WordPress is. So that's another thing to me is like, I don't know. I mean, I don't, it's just kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm having an epiphany there on that. Don't know if I fully love it, but I think Ruben, then you have people that hate core and say use bricks. Yeah. I don't know what that was specifically in reference to, but yeah, I mean, just in general, like I, I don't, I don't know. I think there's good and bad there. Um, I'm not telling people what to use. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to understand really the, 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 the inner workings and the vision. Cause that's, I'm crazy like that, I guess. Uh, Brian here, what do we got? Um, if you want to get your idea in core, you have to show up for a long time, be helpful, improve the value of the idea. And sometimes the core team just makes bad decisions. Okay. I mean, understand that. Um, sounds a little, sounds a little tenure-ish which I don't like. But what I mean is I'm not saying that like, I was kidding about the fucking Rickroll thing, okay? But I'm saying like, if there's an actual good idea, which again, good is subjective, but I could, I mean, the thing the thing needs work, right? We all agree on that, right? We all need, we're, it's still working, right? We're still working on it. You could come up with an idea that would make sense. You know, like that, 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 that is obnoxiously objective. Like, it's not like we're trying to change the fucking whole UI and everything like that. One thing, and you're, are you saying that like it wouldn't, it wouldn't get, I maybe I'll just try it. Fuck it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, giving up for MJ's learning in public. Hey, Matt, you didn't have to do that. I appreciate that, brother. Um, learn in public. Hashtag learn in public. Um, I've been asking for numbers for years. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they exist. I don't know if they could possibly exist. Maybe you could get some sort of scraping, you know, to, to kind of give you a, a kind of an idea, but I don't know. Um, like WordPress keeps the internet's lights on, whether people know it or not. I mean, you know, I tend to agree with that. I, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of it out there. Um, we, I mean, I guess technically we kind of know how many installs there would be. Right. I mean, I, I know that I'm pretty sure I saw the website yesterday during the launch party that like, I didn't realize it actually counts it somehow. Um, and obviously it built with and things like things like that. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just interested. I know there was talks yesterday about, uh, you know, where everything is headed. Um, just the, more so the internet in general. Like, so the thing that, the thing that I'm thinking here, I'm giving you a quick, quick aside. Here's the reason I'm not a software developer by trade or anything, right? I'm definitely not a designer. I'm not very good at that, but like I'm more of like, a, I was more of like a webmaster business guy went for information science, was in CS for a little bit. No, obviously HTML, CSS, a little bit of Java, but, but the thing is I'm not, I'm not a master at those things. So I'm trying to give you some context here. And when I'm looking at this, when I moved from Elementor to Bricks, I was like, Hmm, this will help me be a better understander of how the internet operates because it's way more, it's way closer 
to like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like sections and, you know, understanding divs and how everything fucking works, right? How to actually create a page. Now there's this concept though, where it's like, is that even like the internet? I don't know. Again, hypothesis has always ran on HTML, CSS and JavaScript from what I understand. And it's, I guess, going to continue that, right? But the question is with all the abstraction that's happened over time is, is this a good idea? Like, does it matter anymore? Like when, when, <clears throat> you know, when it came out first, right? When it first came out, <clears throat> the internet, I guess, uh, you know, you had to use HTML, CSS, whatever the fuck there was. And then as you kept going, there was more abstraction, abstraction, abstraction. And then you get things like, obviously we're all the way down to like WordPress, Elementor, all that sort of shit. And, <clears throat> but what Bricks does <clears throat> is the reason that I'm very interested in it is because it, it takes you back to like, it takes it, it like, if you could go back to when the internet was first started, it's like, if you just had those little blocks of like, Hey, just pull in the tags basically, and then insert the things and style and all that. That is the thing that like was really interesting to me. Cause I would understand it, but I wouldn't have to actually be physically coding it. And, but now I'm wondering like, is that even, does that even matter? Like, I mean, it, it does matter, but does it matter in a sense of how much longer is it gonna is it gonna matter if you're trying to build WordPress websites? You know, we have people saying like, oh, AI and and all that sort of stuff, and like, um, you know, hard coding everything isn't isn't the way to go anymore, or like, you know, th those days are behind us, and we're just doing like simpler websites. I mean, I totally get that. Um, so I don't know. Again, I'm just trying to explore. I think we got a couple comments here. Um, as of 2024, there are about 1.98 billion total websites on the web. More than 839 or 835 million sites use WordPress. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is vast. I think we're forgetting most WP users still make sites with free slash paid classic themes and are reliant on the extra customization settings given by that theme on what they can do um, in WP. I'm. I'm. When, when people say classic themes, they just mean like the, the, the older style of theme. I'm not sure what block thing, block themes, I guess block themes use block themes, but I'm thinking like, well, it's one from way back in the fucking day. Um, uh, Astra. I mean, I don't know if Astra's changed or whatever. I know they're big, but I used Astra before. Is that what we're talking about? If, if that's what I'm talking about, is that like, I moved away from that so fast as soon as I found a page boner because like, and it's funny though, because <clears throat> we're all over the place here now, but I appreciate you guys, your engagement, everything like that. This has been a fantastically educational thing. Um, the, the question that I have is um, I moved away from page builder land for, or moved to page builder land for one reason, one reason only it was because like, I didn't want to do the, the custom themes at that point were so, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the classic themes at that point were like so minimal. It's like you had like a maybe a starter site, but you could, you couldn't change. You couldn't put anything where you want. Like that's why I moved to the page builder world. And now it's kind of like, kind of like receding a little bit because you can kind of do some of that stuff, but you could do it in like a, a, a block theme, I guess now. But I mean, that, that's a good point. Like, I don't know, I don't know what that ex, ex, extra customization settings are, but I'm assuming they're all the things that you ooh, almost spilled my water, um, have been come accustomed to. So what else we got here? Um, that's around the number that I've seen, Ruben, 700 to 800 million sites. Make sure you realize how big a deal the transition to FSE is. Certainly. Um, I mean, here's the thing though. Okay. Um, just a thought, not even push back on that. Also, sorry, Mike, I didn't share your comment there. Um, the, the thing, the thing that I would say about that though, is that I would be the secondary number that I'd be interested in. Okay. Well, obviously we didn't even get the first number like DIY versus agency, but the secondary number that I would be interested in is how many of those sites are like, like what's the spread on versions of WordPress that those are on. Now, obviously, fuck, who would know that number? You know, like, but but what I'm saying is like, if people are, if people are just having a WordPress website, like there's a ton of agencies that we hope, obviously, fingers crossed, are keeping the stuff up to date. But the question is, just as a curious thing, how many of those websites are like basically dead? Like, is, are they all active? Are they all live? Are they all being updated? Because then it's still, a, I'm sure it's still a big number, but I, I would venture to say because WordPress has been free in its nature, DIY centric in a lot of ways, there's probably a lot of people that built a website for no goddamn reason and then stopped. And like, 
I know people that just pay for random shit for years and don't know about it. It's actually scary as a finance, you know, somewhat of a finance guy myself, like scary that you just like, just keep paying like, you know, Bluehost something like $10 a month and like never look at it. But my point being there is that I, I think I'd be very interesting to see how many of those websites are basically, they're there, they have WordPress on them, but they're dead. Like there's no way that what I'm saying is there's no way they'd even be affected by FAC. I'm sure the number is still big. I'm just saying be an interesting, interesting question. Um, you should pick one, you should pick like one small tangible change you want to see to core and try to get it through comment on the issue, convince a developer to work on it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'll try it. Um, pre-block themes. Gotcha. Um, even if 200 million were dead and the number was fine. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Just interesting. Just an interesting thought. Oh, what else we got here? This has been great. Um, uh, proprietary build. Yeah. Okay. We got that. Um, I mean, there is one big thing obviously that we need to talk about. Um, Peter, I think we need to respect there are numerous WP stacks tribes that are, that use WP the way they use WP and communicate to these groups in the same same way is difficult, if not a mistake. Uh, these groups the same way is difficult, not a mistake. Yeah. Um, there's no easy answers to this. I mean, it's it's huge. Uh, you're affecting a lot of different people by doing things. You're getting a lot of feedback. Um, if we're actually serious about making this, see, here's, okay, here, here's, here's the wrap on this. Okay. On this, on this bit of this, um, if, if the goal, see, cause, cause everything that you guys have taught me today has changed my mind. Like it's not, it's not, it's not changed my mind, but it's, it's again, changed my outlook. So I have a different opinion on it. If the goal, like we need to understand the goal. Because we keep saying it's open source and everything like that, but if it has some sort of roadmap, which apparently it kind of does, then like if we're not if we're not accurate, if we're not like effectively communicating to the people like Peter that bring that the the people that Peter brings up here, if we're not accurately and effectively communicating where this is going and what to expect then, and again, maybe it's just like paying attention to the news, like these people need to pay attention to the news, but I don't know how you could like expect them to do that. Like if we're not doing that, then it's tough. Um, because everybody's going to have a different, you know, stack, a different way of doing things. And it's going to be quite jarring when weird shit happens that they didn't expect. Now, again, I'm, you know, I mean, fucking people don't know what's going on in Apple and then they changed, you know, something on the phone. So I, I get that. But I'm just saying, like, either like kind of lean into that and and see what the deal is there, or actually get feedback and kind of like act on it. I mean, that's kind of the one thing that that I'm not a hundred percent certain of. I guess it's just the people that care enough to provide feedback are the ones that give feedback, I guess. But like again, I mean, it's just a little weird to me. It's a little weird to me because it seems like the people that care are the people that, you know, like Matt said, are the people that their livelihoods depend on it. But at the same time, those aren't the people that WordPress is serving. So it's a little weird that we're not trying to even get like DIYers. Like I know Peter's doing a great job with like meetups and everything, but like how, why, like we, it's almost like we need it. It's almost like, again, we're talking to the wrong audience. Like we're, we're having discussions that why, why is there, is, is there a way, has there been a way, like, is there any, is there any reason to like try to find DIYers and get them to like answer questions like of what this should be, what it, where it should go and all that? Because again, I understand it's not a product. I understand it's not built for a niche audience. It kind of is though. I mean, it's built for the average WordPress user. That is, that is an audience. Um, but how do you, like, how do you, how are you building a product for something Who's, wow, this is actually really mind fuck now. Okay. Um, how are you building something for somebody? Are you, are we talking to the DIYers? I mean, I know Peter is, but are we talking to the DIYers? Because we, we're building it for them, right? That part confuses me. I need, I need, I need clarity on that. Help me. Um, a DIY blogger and a Bricks developer are two completely different WP users. P.S. They are, there are many 
millions more DIY bloggers. Yeah. Fair. Um, you're basically making the case for there being just one visual editor in WordPress that all tools build off of. Basically making the case that uh, I, I, I kind of feel like that is where we're headed. I kind of feel like that's the roadmap, no? Is that not the roadmap? I actually would be all for it. I mean, like, I, I don't know if I'd be all for it, but like, I mean, I, it actually seems kind of like, kind of actually seems, you know, somewhat to make sense. From a competition perspective, you know, if you want to keep the same vibe, yeah, don't let, don't, you know, don't say to people that they can't build plugins and third-party software and everything like that and extend it. But I'm saying like, is that not the goal? I'm actually kind of confused now. I'm actually really confused on that. Um, there is an annual survey, but again, the response will be from a self-selected minor group. That's not ideal. It'd be nice if we shot that out to everyone. I welcome our new editor overlords. It's just a, it's just a confusing it's a confusing it's a confusing bit of things there. I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I want one thing, but I'm is the goal. Let's make it simple. What is the most Here's 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 where I'm at. Okay. What is the most robust page builder? This is a fucking obviously a subjective question. But let's let can we just can we just level on just like something just as an example? Let's say hypothetically, not ruffling feathers. Sorry, Ruben. Let's say Bricks is like oh, no no no. Let's let's say let's say Elementor as an example is the most robust page builder. Just as an example, okay? Huge ecosystem, a lot of shit extending it. All right. Help me, okay? Help me help me understand. Is the goal to make continuously? Because it would probably never be done. Is the goal to is the goal if we can wave a magic wand? Actually, if you may wave a magic wand, what what would be the answer? But if you wave a magic wand, is the block editor, the core site editor, that whole experience, is the magic wand answer? Is it to have all of the shit that Elementor has, as an example, but be built for an average user? My here's my thing, because I think I know an I, I know one route of an answer that might be that might be had here, right? Is the average WordPress user doesn't need all the Elementor shit because agencies are using it. It was built for agency. Da, 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 da. I get that totally get that. So my question becomes. Maybe it won't end ever, the evolution of the block editor, for instance. But like, how do we know what the DIYer even needs, wants, whatever? And how do we know when we've gotten there? And how do we know, like, are we just going to continue to add more functionality just like, like an Elementor would? Because I don't think you can say the product thing here. I don't, I, I, that's always the answer. I don't think we can, I don't think we, our, our answer here to could this, to could this, I don't think the answer to here could be the, the, it's a product thing because it has nothing to do with it. It's, I'm talking about like the, the development of it. Like, where does it go? You know? Um, hmm. I don't know. GeoCities. I don't know what that's in reference to, Mike. But yeah. That's my thought is I don't, I don't know where that goes. Like if it, if it's just continuously for the DIYer makes sense. Um, it's for everyone. Okay. Use that as a term instead, but like, where does it like, is the idea for it to continuously get more feature set? Not what have you, if we could wave a magic wand and you could take all of the page builder f functionality from every page builder and put that in core block editor tomorrow. Is that, is that something that we would want? Is that something that we don't want? Is that something that doesn't make any sense? Oh, a paid service. Interesting. What does that mean? We talking like WordPress becomes a paid service? 
because I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, is that a little conspiratorial? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, what else we got here? I think we have to talk about one more thing because I think it's really important. Um, Brian, the goal is to build one visual editor that's extendable and yet simple. And it's taking forever to get there. Okay. But if bricks had to ensure that 800 million websites didn't break, they'd be slower too. I 100% agree that the the scale of core and bricks is totally different. Um, I would love more clarity on the extendable yet simple piece. But yeah. Um, so there are renewed discussions about what should be in core versus what should be in a plug in core. Now, this is a really important topic. I think that's probably the most important topic because if we could get some, you know, um, if we get some cohesion on that, if we, should, if we could come to some agreement on that in any way, which I don't know how that would, I don't know how that actually manifests, but if, if we could get to some agreement on that, um, yeah, I don't know. Is that in is that in GitHub, Peter? Um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I think that that I mean that's probably it's <laughs> that's honestly that is probably like the most important topic. Like truthfully, like at at the core of it, right? no pun intended, at the core of the argument, like that's probably the most important thing because not only is that important for agencies, people that are in the thing, you know, again, whatever, like di like like DIYers need to know it's like oh you can do this without a plugin versus you can't you need a plugin for this. It's like a separation of concerns. I mean, I could see, guys, if we make this thing simple, like we could put on the fucking WP admin screen, like in every install, like maybe you have like a, maybe a, maybe a specific DIY install or just in general, it doesn't matter. Like you could put a screen. It's like, Hey, look, if you want to do this, this, and this, it's all available in here. If you want to do, I know there's like the, the WordPress 6.5. Like I know that like kind of outlines like change and stuff, but I'm saying like, if, if we wanted to make it that simple, I think there's like really an opportunity to do that. If we get something like that under wraps, it's like, this is the shit you can do natively. In the past, you had to download a plugin for everything. This is all the things you can do natively. Here's the things that you, you may need a plugin for. Like, you know, whatever that is. Slack and GitHub. Cool. I'll check this out for sure. Um, okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up here with this last topic. That's probably going to go off the rails. So, Okay. Here's what I'm saying. How do I position this? Um, I really believe, truly, and you guys, I know, I know you guys are not going to agree with this, but I, I really believe. I, I hope that you can hear me out, and I really hope to have actual discussions with you because this has been fantastic. Again, I want to fucking tell every single one of you. I love all of you. Thank you so much for for all this, all the knowledge, all the engagement here. Fantastic. I've learned a lot. I can't tell you truthfully how much I appreciate this. I think it's been great. Hopefully you guys got something out of it too. At least, you know, saw me learn in public. And all that. But here's the thing. I would love to have more conversations directly with you guys, particularly on live streams or whatever. So we can have other things. If you guys want to come on the channel, whatever, like, I don't care. Like, however we want to do it. I think this is genuinely, my premise of this is more dialogue is more progress. Now, I know that there's other schools of thought on that. I get that. And when I say dialogue, I mean like generally like actual dialogue here. Because you guys have been able to watch me. Obviously, I haven't been able to talk to you guys specifically or like listen to you guys specifically. But like there's, there's, this is a way different experience than just text. Okay. And it's only two hours, right? Like think about how many text messages you could send in two hours and like, yeah, I might get the point, but you're still going to lose a lot of like stuff. And then we're like typing a bunch of walls of text and all that. Okay. So here's my thing though. I genuinely believe because it's actually benefited me and it's, 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 I've seen it play out in so many areas of life, not just the WordPress thing that more dialogue, particularly either in person or at least, you know, in 2024, like camera and a microphone is way better, way more productive than just text-based conversations. And I don't even want to say it's not a blanket statement. Okay. There is, I'm not saying just, hey, you want to say hello? I'm not, I'm not saying just send me a text hello with your face. Okay, I'm not like a video. I'm not saying that. But like when you're trying to convey 
And maybe this is because this is just the way that like everybody is accustomed to and I'm new. So it's not like this, but like, I guess you guys are just like literally always on the keyboard, which is amazing. Right. And you're always in GitHub and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, just comes naturally, but this comes naturally to me. So like, and I truly believe, I mean, well, this isn't, this isn't actually, I'm gonna stop saying I truly believe this is objective. Like you lose a lot of connotation. There's more ways for misinterpretation through text. Okay. I would encourage all of us to try to not have deep philosophical and technical debates in fucking Twitter. Okay. Like on in text on Twitter. Okay. On X. I don't think it's really that productive. Okay. And I know that all sides are passionate. Okay. It, it's really just not productive. There's, there's ancillary things too. Cause like other people see it and it's like, ah, oh, there's like whatever, like WordPress is, you know, these people are crazy or whatever. I, I don't really give too much of a shit about that because I don't, you know, if you, if it's, it's, it's like infighting, but at the same time, it's like, if it, like, we still believe, like we're still on the same team at the end of the day, like we're still pushing WordPress forward. So it's like, whatever. I'm just saying that like, this is this, I've seen this play out so many different areas. And the only way that you combat ideas that you don't agree with, or you think are in a, that are, that are presented in a bad way or in a way that you don't agree with that, you have to fucking face them head on in a way in which more than just the the echo chamber of the audiences will be able to see and will be able to fully consume and digest in a way that is human, okay? This text shit is not human. We didn't have this forever. I'm not saying it's bad, okay? But it's not human, right? I've listened, like, I listen to so many podcasts. I've listened to so many things. You get so much out of that that you don't get out of reading something. Okay. I'm not, again, I'm not shitting on reading. Okay. I don't like to read, but <laughs> you get what I'm I hope you get what I'm saying. I, I hope you, I hope you at least understand where I'm coming from here, even if you don't necessarily agree. But what I am, I'm, I'm, I'm very, un, until like this is actually proven wrong. Like if you have a disagreement or even more, if you don't think the fucking argument is presented in a way that you like or whatever, you have to fate, you have to combat it head on. The only way to actually rid that that thing is to, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even saying if it something is or isn't. But if you believe that, you have to show. You have to. You, it's your duty. Like the only way to fix that is to show that the line of thinking is incorrect. The logic is wrong. There's X Y Z going on there. Whatever. I don't know of a different way to do that. I mean, because the other way, there's other options. Okay. Let's talk about the other options. The other options are to completely ignore it. The other options are to uh, completely block it out. Don't ever look at it at all. Um, engage in walls of text that like everybody can read, but like has a different interpretation of it. Because like, I don't know if you guys have ever done this when you've sent something to somebody, but you think of it one way in your mind and then they read it another way in their mind. You like forget a fucking comma or something, you know, like it, it's something as simple as that. I'm just saying it's not, it's not human. It's not, it's not, it's not a good form of communication for those, that magnitude of type of shit. So that's why I think there's a disconnect for me with like all the, you know, the WordPress stuff specifically with like the GitHub and things like that. Cause I just, it's fucking exhausting. Um, but I'll deal with that, whatever. I don't know if there's a better solution for that, but these ones guys, please, like I, you can be, you can completely disagree with what I'm saying. And I'm happy to talk to you about it. I'm not trying to change your mind. Even I'm just trying to say like, I, I've, I've physically seen this. If you pay attention in like broader things, it's the only way, like, it's really the only way you can't fix. Like you, the only way to fix like bad speech or whatever is with more good speech. Like you can't, you can't ignoring it is whatever. Fine. If you want to do that, but Honestly, like I, I haven't, I haven't figured out a better way to deal with it. Um, and there's definitely worse ways. So I don't know, high level, um, just kind of, you know, everything that I've, that I've seen in my tenure so far as a six month WordPress 
community member, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I don't know guys. Um, if you have any more thoughts, I'm happy to, I'm happy to chat about them, but those are, those are my big ones. Um, I'm excited for where it's going. I hope that it continues to evolve, get better. I hope that uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be in the GitHub and Slack and everything like that. Um, trying to, I guess, you know, move the ball forward as much as possible. But, um, but yeah, so I've done a lot of talking today. I really appreciate you guys listening to me for, uh, for several hours here. Mike, so what's your, so what are you actually saying? Don't engage in written form, fire up a podcast instead. I mean, I would 100% think that that's a better approach. I'm not saying don't engage at all. Okay. But I do think that here, okay, here's what I mean. Oop. Went to Peter. I'll come back to you, Peter. One second. Here's what I mean. Okay. When you think about this, okay, when you think about, I don't want to call it influence. I just want to call it people listening. Okay. And don't, don't take my fucking advice if you don't want to, like anybody in general, don't take it in, don't take it in general. I, you know, who the fuck am I? Okay. But, I'm, but think about it maybe. Okay. If you think about this in general, like human behavior and all that sort of stuff, if you are louder, you may amass more influence. Doesn't mean you're right right? But what if you're loud and good in a sense? Like if, if, if like you're well-meaning and you're loud, well, fuck, that's like, you know, and again, we're, we're being super subjective here. What is good and bad and all that sort of shit. But I'm saying, forget it, forget it for a second, forget the good and the bad. If you think that you're right, somebody else is wrong and you're not louder than them, there's no chance. There's no chance. There's no chance. And I don't mean like loud as in like, you know, being obnoxious or whatever. I'm just saying like, if you're not, if you're not out there, there are so many people that I know specifically, even in the community that are fucking brainiacs, geniuses. They have so many good ideas. They have so much like, like, um, so many good ideas, so many good ways of thinking about X, Y, Z pieces of this thing. And they're not like out there more. I'm not saying you have to do this shit like necessarily, but if you can get yourself to do it, I guarantee you that people will start to this is almost like personal branding fucking class at this point. Like I guarantee you that people will start to listen a little bit. People will start to understand you more. People will understand and resonate with you more. It's just more human. It's literally that fucking simple. People connect with humans more than they do with like logos and even like ideas. Sometimes they connect with you and then that's how it works. It's almost like just reverse engineering anything that you dislike in a way. So I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying don't engage in text. I mean, I think, I think big walls of text are slightly off-putting and, and the bigger, the bigger, the wall of text, the more room there is for misinterpretation, right? And potentially waste of time, but, and also random thing, it's way easier right now, at least in 2024 to go from video and audio down to text. If you're actually worried about that as well, then then it is, I don't know what that noise was. And then versus, um, versus going from text up to video and audio. Right. So my point is like, if it's a total aside, but if you're worried about content in any sort of way, or just like getting your message out there, it's way easier to go the other way. So why not just do one thing and bring it down rather than try to go up? But again, I mean, fire a podcast. That's a great idea. I mean, just, I don't know, do, I don't know, do something. I don't know. I agree 100% that asynchronous text-based communication is at the very least lacking. I don't know if there's a better way to do it. Text is fantastic as a, as a tool, but you, but like there is so much that gets lost in translation, literally, literally, honestly, in some cases in, in our industry. Right. So, um, yeah. When talking to people who want to build a website, a lot of the ones who currently have a WordPress website say it's just a nightmare to work with. Going back to the other topic there a little bit, but I appreciate that. That that is an interesting perspective because if that's the case, I don't know what the sample size there is, but if that's the case, then that is not the, the thing is not meeting the expectations of the the fucking niche audience. Like I mean, literally the people that it's built for. So that's kind of interesting. 
Um, tons of positivity happens in those micro conversations on Twitter and otherwise. I mean, yeah, Mike, you're hundred percent. I, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I, I think, I think I'm speaking a little broader than that though. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in no way, shape or form. Am I saying never type anything again? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a bigger, there's the bigger issues, the bigger issues. You got, you got to talk to people. You got to talk to people. Cause if you don't, if you don't talk to them face to face and actually have that conversation, one again, it's it takes out completely takes out the human element. But the other thing is like when you're talking to somebody, it's way easier to find to find them on their bullshit. It's way easier, way easier than like just reading something that was like crafted in a way that like maybe was dodgy or this that or the other thing. I'm just don't, don't you know take it or leave it. That's whatever you want. Um, asynchronous Slack communication is is necessary, but meetings often consist of a handful of people. Uh, open up an online conversation at the same time and capture it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and let others know that is an option for the way of connecting. Yeah. Um, meetings often consist. I'm trying to reread that. Um, that's the thing too, is like, there's a ton of people in that Slack group. And then, you know, I was at the data liberation one and that's an early topic. So whatever, but like there was, you know, at the, at the block editor one, there was a ton. I think I've, I've, I've sat in two of them. I've watched the other one. I really like them. It's really cool. It's a great thing. Um, it's awesome. There's there's a lot of there's a I think there's a lot of good going on there. There's a lot of really good people, uh, and there's a mixed bag of like what the people are trying to do. You know what I mean? There's developers. There's automaticians. There's uh, I think there's DIYers. There's like all sorts of stuff. But again, I just think that it seems like one thing that we've answered. We want an extendable yet simple builder that is most that the the most focus on is for the average WordPress user. And if we we need to define 100% the average WordPress user and we need to find them and we need to make sure that they are always included in the conversation, which is a little bit of an oxymoron because I don't know how many DIYers are in the GitHub repos, but I don't know. Um, I invite those users to meet up where they can actually engage in conversation. Many like ours are online. All are welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, you got to think people are people are busy. Right. I mean, if they're DIYers are fucking running a whole other business that doesn't have anything to do with this. So, you know, it's, it's understandable. Um, this is a, this is an incredibly honorable, admirable mission. hundred percent. No doubt about it. If anybody disagrees with that, I mean, it's, you know, they they probably got other like create like different completely different views on you know on on what the internet should be and all that sort of stuff right um we're in the trenches we're thinking about this stuff all the time uh and we're trying and we're seeing all of the you know, the ins and outs and the, the tight things that you know going on here that like the that people you know the normal person doesn't see so that's why to me it's a little it's a little tough you know because I think if we're actually thinking about it, right, if you're an agency, let's try to recap a little bit here. I, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys, um, but let's try to recap a little bit here because I've learned a lot. Moving forward, we're moving forward on the Gutenberg project. It, it affects a, a shit ton of people, right? Um, There's also a good, good point here by Peter. Different people interact and learn differently. It's actually an accessibility issue to limit contribution in specific ways. 100% agree. That's why it's, and it's definitely easier to go down than up, like from video and audio down to text rather than go up. So I don't know. Um, just a thought there. You guys take it or leave it as far as that goes. But let's, to kind of like summarize here, okay, what I've, what I've learned from you guys is that WordPress is a huge ass ship of 800 million sites, Maybe less if it's if there's some of them are dead or whatever, but a ton of them that 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 are being affected by every move that core makes and all that sort of stuff. Not an easy task whatsoever. The mission is to make an extendable, simple builder that is for everyone. Translation, the average user, first and foremost. Agencies and people in the space, which is totally separate, vastly separate from DIYers and average WordPress users. People that are in the space are hearing this stuff all the time. 
are being affected because it affects their bottom line to a certain extent or the way that their business operates. They hear it. They see the changes. They have opinions because it's affecting the stuff that they're doing. They voice those changes in their best interest because they are agencies and they have like, oh, we want to do this, this, this. Those changes may or may not get uh, considered, all depending, variable factors there. But they may or not get considered because they are not the exact audience that the product is being built for, but they are using it. So then the question becomes how, like, like that's a weird place because the people that are, that are contributing the most or people that care the most are not necessarily the people that the product is being built for. I keep saying product, sorry. Okay. The, the builder is being built for. So in a lot of ways, people, I believe like Peter, if I understand correctly, are some of the most important people because what's happening is at these meetup groups with these, the, the intended audience, like the, the number one audience, the average WordPress user at a meetup group, all of those questions are being submitted. All of those difficulties, all of that feedback is being submitted. Oftentimes, not with a technical perspective, I would assume. I mean, they're being technical in the thing, but they're not they're not a technician necessarily. They're doing it themselves. They obviously they obviously know how to use it, but they're but they're not thinking of all the things in the same ways. So now, this is fucking crazy. So now we have uh, we have person in a meetup group telling meetup organizer, not just the meetup groups, but as an example, telling the organizer, this is what we should do. Meetup organizer brings that to, uh, you know, the, the, the GitHub repos and everything like that as like the conduit. Cause I, I don't know if you get expected DIY or necessarily do that. Then the, th that is submitted Okay. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm again, this is hypo hypothesis. Okay. I don't know if this is exactly how this works. That's what I've gathered. So then that thing is submitted, but that thing is submitted from a non-technician point of view on what to do. And then maybe it gets incorporated again. We'll pick on the, the group thing. Okay. So then it, the group thing, right? So now the group thing gets instantiated into like, uh, you know, implemented in a, in a builder and the agencies were saying probably at the same time, no, we need sections. We need divs. We need whatever. So they look at that and like, what the fuck, who, who said to put that in there? <laughs> and it's really the DIY at the meetup group. So I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just trying to understand how the flow works. <laughs> um, and I just think that's really interesting because you have people that are, you have two separate separate audiences with different with different skill sets, different backgrounds, different reasons for being on the platform. And they're and they're still kind of all there, all using it and everything like that. Um I think I think that the only thing that I that I that I can think of is Democratizing publishing is good. I, I I really I really don't I think that there's a better way to say WordPress. WordPress is for everyone. I mean I get it, but the problem is there needs to be like a little byline underneath. It means like it's like it could be you know it could be for everyone. Um, just again the builder piece. I guess maybe that's maybe they're talking about the whole thing. Obviously the whole thing is for everyone. Um, so maybe it's not a misnomer. I just think that this has provided a lot of clarity to me. And I think that moving forward, I'm going to try to do my best to anytime people talk about this or get um, disappointed, discouraged, um, upset about like what's going on. I'm just going to try to paint that picture and that's going to be, um, you know, kind of how it, like how it ultimately, um, I don't know. I just think that's, that's how you ultimately have to look at it. Um, which is interesting. I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's a way to say good, bad, or indifferent, but it, but it is, it is, I guess the situation I'm excited to see how it evolves though. Like I said, because 
I don't know how you, I don't know. I don't know the numbers. I don't know the financials. I don't know those types of things, but I don't know how that, I don't, I, that part of it, it's going to be interesting to me if, if it ever evolves or divulges into something different, only time will tell there. And I don't, I don't know if that's overly reaching. Um, but yeah, Hmm. this has been great. This has been really insightful, really exploratory. Um, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things to do. Um, some action items would be probably to get involved in the Slack and the the GitHub. I think we should all do that uh, if we're not already. Um, but I really think more than anything, it's just it's just clarity and understanding. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I am not an average WordPress user, so I don't think. that the core, if I'm, if I'm not, if I'm connecting the dots wrong, somebody tell me, but I, I'm not an average WordPress user, so I don't know if the block editor is for me. That's, that's one, that's one random thing that I've, that I've kind of come to, um, which is fine if that is the case. If it's not, then obviously, um, could kind of evolve a little bit in the thought process, but but it's I'm I'm very I'm very much I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm very I'm very much more happy now that like I understand or like we're like more comfortable and understanding a lot more of that. That was just two hours. I wonder, wonder what we could do in like twelve. Um, but yeah, I mean I think I think there's just I don't know. Am I going to move away from bricks and page builders? I mean probably probably not. Will I continue to look into Gutenberg and should I play around with it a little more? I, I suppose. I gotta be honest though, I don't know. I don't I don't know if that's a good use of my my time though. That's the thing that I've kind of that's one thing that I've that I've thought of is if I was gonna do that, I think I would need to gather up a ton of DIYers and I would need to listen and then I would need to report. Cause it doesn't seem like, ah, man, that's tough. That's a real tough spot. I don't know. I don't know the answers. I honestly don't. Um, I really don't. I'd really, that's a tough, that's a really difficult thing. I don't know how to, I don't know how you do that. More DIYers using the product. There's the product is being built for DIYers, but it's being communicated about and, um, and built by technical people. I guess the only question that I still have, and I don't know if it can be answered right now, is how are we, if I wanted to build, if I wanted to build the perfect, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. If I wanted to build the perfect product for a specific audience, I'd probably, t I'd probably do a lot of research on what they want, what they want, what, you know, what they're asking about, what they want, everything like that. Um, and what they really need. So my only question would be like, how are we, how are we the part that I didn't get is how are we, if we're building for the average WordPress user, how are we getting that feedback from them? How are we deciding on what we want? How are we deciding? Are we deciding on what they want for them, or are we actually have a channel for those people to to talk? And obviously, I understand the Slack and things, but that's not that doesn't seem doesn't seem like that's the thing. Doesn't seem like that's like that's a realistic expectation. Hmm. Sort of like a it's ridiculous, but like, is there like a mailing list that we could send a survey out for? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I don't. I'm not saying that's the way. I'm just saying like I don't I don't know of another thing. I don't know. That's my main question I guess right now is cuz like again, I don't know if my my opinion even matters. You know what I mean? In one way, I'm not an average WordPress user. It's not being built for me. So why am I And that's honestly that's the theme that I've kind of seen is that if you if you if you give input that does not align with that, 
wow, this is a real epiphany. If you if you give input that doesn't align with that, it's not really met with um it's not really it's not really met with oh yeah, we should add that. It's met with nah, it's not for that. Which again is not bad. It's not right, wrong, indifferent. It's whatever. It's whatever the fuck you guys like whatever whatever we want to do, like whatever whatever the leads or whoever the hell wants to do. But if that's not the case, that's not the goal, that's not the mission. Why waste the breath, I guess, in that in that regard or the typing. Wow. I Fuck, I'm going to have to think about that more. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I really appreciate everyone being on here, sticking with me for this uh, long stream here. But, um, but yeah. Uh, Peter, one thing to consider is that the average WP user does not want 59,000 plugins, 12,000. Uh, they want freedom and choice. Um, they want freedom from choice. I mean, that is that is a good that is a good point. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would want a simple experience too. Like if if I was if I was not a web developer, I would want a simple experience. I would want, you know, hey, how do I build a website? Just tell me what to do. Click around, do this, that. Don't make any decisions. No decision fatigue. No, like, oh, should I use Astro? Should I use Bold? I don't know, whatever the hell else ones. You know, like, should I use those? That yeah, that, I get that. Um, I do think though that that possibly lends itself to to like a uh, a DIY mode, really. Uh, I could see that happening and I could see that happening like as a slow roll where like they can't, they can't download themes. They can't install themes. They can't install plugins. Um, and it's just like very gated, uh, where you can only use like FSE and, and the block, you know, the native block stuff. Um, I actually would, I would say I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to that necessarily. I think there would be a lot of, um, I feel like that would that would actually solve some problems. Be like, if you're talking about DIY mode here, go to DIY mode. And then elsewhere, it's like, you know, free reign for other things. But again, that's almost like WordPress.com, isn't it? I mean, they, they lock it down pretty heavily. I don't know. There's a lot going on here. I don't know if we'll ever find answers, but yeah. That's why they often pick someone to tell them what to do so they can just lead stack drives. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, 100% I've seen that. Like build a WordPress website in an hour. Yeah go through the hosting and everything like that. I'm not a big fan of that just because I I think that it, well, I'm not, I, this will be a topic maybe for a different one, but I'm not really a big fan of that. I've never wanted to do that because I think it one diminishes the, the expertise, the expertise, at least a little bit of like webmasters, web designers, web developers, but not just that. I mean, it's whatever, like, you know, I'm all about like ha having people help other people, but I think that there should also be I think there's a real conversation to be had before those videos take place, before somebody jumps in and be like, listen, you are getting yourself into some shit here. Like I, I, I don't like to sugarcoat stuff for, for people like that. I'm not saying that you can't do it. Like I would literally have a conversation. If I made one of those videos, here's what the first 30 minutes of the video would be me saying like, Hey, listen, I'm not trying to scare you away from doing this, but I am telling you that it's not, it's not as easy as you may think it is. It can be easy, but you have to understand that this is still something that is technical in nature and shit could go wrong. And if something does go wrong, you need to have somebody that knows more than you on basically on call. And that's what that that's that's the real value of a of a of a website professional, like a technician, is like they've seen this shit before, they know what to do. You are a DIYer, you've built one website, you don't know what to do, which is fine because you're not a web professional you can build your site. That's totally fine. But I think that's the one thing that I would mainly hit on is like, it's not as easy as some of these things make it seem. It's, uh, it's straightforward in some ways, but it's not like it's always going to be a walk in the park. So I don't know. We've been on here for a while. Um, appreciate all the engagement guys. Appreciate the comments. Appreciate the, the knowledge. Um, I want to continue to do stuff like this. I think it's pretty important. I do need to get back to some technical stuff though, too, because people will, I know people are, there's only so many people that care about this stuff, even though it's important, um, which is fine. I think it's, I think it is important, but, um, 
I know I've been, I know I owe you guys some, some client portal videos. If you're here, if you're for that or anything like that. And I know there's a lot of other things that I'd like to talk about. I like to talk about business, business on this channel as well, because, um, if you're trying to do this, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you should consider there as well. But, um, with that, this has been great guys. If you want to join the newsletter, go to mjs.bio, uh, all the socials and links are there and everything like that. Working on a new website, ton of value there, hopefully. But, um, can't thank you guys enough. Two and two hours, 15 minutes strong there. Um, really good stuff. Just thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, we'll talk to you in the next one every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern.